Hey guys, today I want to show you the new crafting system in the low poly game kit for Unity. So let's start with the crafting recipes. There's a recipe manager prefab that you can drag into your scene. And this is basically like a recipe book that contains all the recipes that you created. Let's have a look at an example recipe to craft an X. In the recipe you define which items you need in the inventory for crafting special items, which is the result of the recipe. In this example we need a metal piece from the interactables prefabs and also these locks to be able to craft an axe a weapon. This recipe is added to the recipe manager so we can start the game and just go ahead and collect items. Okay, now I collected four items and then I press Shift and C to open the crafting panel. Now I can drag the items from the inventory to the crafting panel. It doesn't matter where I drag them because the next free slot is found by the logic of the crafting UI. And now you see I have the items available for crafting the X. I press craft item and the X is crafted and added to the inventory. The gem is not needed for crafting, but once I close the crafting panel, it is again added to the inventory and now I can use the weapon, then I can drop it and pick it up again. You see, it's just an inventory item, but crafted. Okay, so let me show you how to create your own recipes. Again, it's quite simple. Choose a folder where you want to create your recipe, then right click, create LPGK Low Poly Game Kit and select recipe. In this recipe I want to craft a gun, so I give it a name like recipe gun. For this let's say we need metal parts, but two of them. So first I have to select the interactable from the prefabs interactables folder. And I drag this metal part into the slot and the count are set to 2. Alright, then we have to define the result, the item that is crafted which is a gun and the count is 1. Ok, and the last thing we have to do is to use this recipe in the recipe manager. So I select it in the scene, increase the size to 2 items and use the recipe for the second element. That's it, now start the game and pick up 2 metal parts. Of course you can collect other items as well, the only thing that's important is that you have these two metal parts for crafting the gun. Now I open the crafting UI again and drag in some items. And now we can craft the gun because we added two metal parts. Then I close the UI and the first aid, which is not needed for crafting the gun, is again added to the inventory. And now I can use the gun, for instance, to get some food. I explained in the documentation how to use the new crafting components. You find this in the folder Docs. Ok, what I also want to point out is just that you see that this is a very flexible architecture. How I separated data, for instance the crafting and recipe manager from the UI. The design is that every time the data is changing, for instance in the inventory or the crafting manager, Events like inventory item added or removed are fired and the UI components bind these events and they are updated then. This makes the whole asset really dynamic and extendable. In the UI we have these slots in the inventory and the crafting panel. They have a button, an image and a text. The image can be dragged and for this I'm implementing Unity interfaces. You can see them, these drag handler interfaces, which provide callback methods like onBeginDrag. When this is invoked, I create a drag image dynamically, for which I define the canvas, the hut, as the parent, and then call setLastSibling to display it at the top of all other UI components. I assign the image, the sprite of the item that I'm dragging, and then I move it to the position of the mouse cursor. Then let's have a look at the onDrop here in the crafting panel. It is a method of the interface idropHandler which I implement here in the crafting panel. 
And what I do here is to get the current item drag handler, the dragged item, which is assigned to the pointer event data. Then I check if the item is from the inventory, if the inventory is the source. And then I use my crafting manager to add the item and after that remove it from the inventory. For these components I wrote a base class, which is called item slot manager. This is very comfortable because it finds the next free slot to add the item and it is stackable. This means you find a slot for the item type and the item is added then to the same slot but the count of the items inside of this slot is increased. When an item is added then this event item added is invoked and we can bind this event then in every UI. This means we are notified in the UI like the crafting panel that an item is added and we can update the particular slot in the UI. So first I get the item panel, which contains the crafting slots, then I'm looping over the transforms inside of the item panel, which are the slots, and assign the image and the count to the UI components that have to be updated. I know this is not a code for beginners, but I will come up with a tutorial in which I explain these steps by a simpler example. Ok, the asset is available from the asset store with the crafting feature, it will be extended of course, updates are free forever and the link can be found in the description. I created the Trello board under this URL in which you can see the planned features for the next version, for instance selecting a character as player in the game, more inventory items like weapons and also environment assets. I also would like to do some refactoring to make the game kit even more modular. At the moment I'm working on a recipe book so that you can see the available recipes for crafting in the UI. So I hope you like the video and the game kit, if you do then don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new features. If you have special wishes, let me know, add these to the comments, follow me on my Instagram, Twitter or Facebook and I see you soon here in the next one on JNM.